Booyah, it's four o'clock. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's get ready to rock and roll. I uh, want to say thanks to everyone that came out today. I don't know, it's Sunday. This is day freaking eight, and we're just warming up. Just warming up. So, with that, since it's four o'clock hour, not trying to keep you forever and forever, let's jump into it. You know what's coming. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. All right. Yesterday, we dealt with social media. And there were some exercises with that. So if you've been, if you started, and you being the hustlers that I know you are, you got started, what is your best social media platform? How many hours a day do you spend there, and how much money do you make? Now, just to briefly step back a bit, to talk about uh, social media. When I say platform, um, you know, it's Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, all that stuff is social media platform because someone can just in the click of a button share something. And that's what the whole deal is. Typically, depending on what you sell, have to offer, will determine your social media platform and how you use it. And with the hours, because there's the thing, there is this misnomer that you have to spend thousands and thousands of hours to be on social media or tweeting people and all this other stuff. It once again it really depends on what you're doing and what you're selling. And with the money, it's often said that social media is very hard to quantify in terms of income. I actually disagree with that. And this is a way for you to quantify what your social media platform is doing. Start with one. Okay? Have a presence on all of them, but start with one and work it and keep your metrics. Okay, you had your business. This business is going along and you're working one platform at a time. If you're only working one and you see an immediate spike in your business and you go back and you say, oh, okay, this is because I did this and I tweet, you know, you'll see that. But when you're tweeting, when you're YouTubing, when you're doing all these other things, it's very hard to get your metrics. So this is a a blind way for you to see if it's even working because my main driver is YouTube and I can tell you how much money I make from the YouTube 95% of my income I'm on Facebook and I have other stuff but YouTube is my main driver so I know that because I've, I've stripped out all of the stuff you know many of the exercises that I'm giving you in this course I've done and I went strictly YouTube only for six months and my income increased I stopped doing, you know, I was on Facebook, but I really didn't invest a lot of energy. And I still, to this day, don't invest a ton of energy into Facebook. I have Facebook as part of, because I have groups there and it's easy for people to connect and share. But once you figure out what's your best social media platform, hammer, hammer, hammer. Because, you know, there's this guy, Gary, what's his name? Volk, I can't say his last name right now, uh, but he wrote this book, Crush It, and you know, his thing is to be everywhere and just just go crazy. To me, that's a recipe for disaster. It's also a recipe for you to wear yourself out. You can literally wear yourself out. So typically, when you're doing your social media platform, you want to do one at a time quantify and when I say you know do it for 30 days 60 days 90 days that way you get some good metrics and then you can figure out how much money you make because a lot of these things don't give you good metrics you have to create your own metrics and you have to create your own methodology for getting your metrics all right day eight we're gonna talk about the process now if uh, you've been with me from day one thank you very much I appreciate it if you notice, I haven't asked you to spend a dime for any of the task. Nothing. You, I have not, not spent a penny. Zilch. Zero. And the reason is very, very simple. Often, people spend money too early in the process before they even know if the ideal is a good ideal. Corporations have done this. Um, big businesses have done this. Uh, I'm not asking you to build a website. Uh, everything here is just really designed to get you in a frame of mind where you're moving, where you are um, doing the things that you need to do in life, 
where you are actually facilitating your business ideals. Because the thing is, websites are nice. Uh, for you know, 18 months, I really didn't have a website. So you can make money without a website if you have the appropriate plugins or you know, like Gumroad. Gumroad's my website. Gumroad's my landing page. I do well with Gumroad. I do well with Get Response, and I do well with YouTube. Those are the three arrows in my quiver because having all this stuff is nice. And I'm not going to say don't have it if you want to have it, but when you build a website. The hardest problem you have is getting traffic. I don't care how you can spend $10 million on your website. You're still going to have the same problem of getting traffic. So why build this stuff before you even know if your ideal is worth building a website for? Because when I first started, and this was some advice I got from a blog, and I thought it was great advice. It's like start three blogs, and one of them is going to be really good. And then, you know, once you get your hosting account, and you know domain names if you know how to shop you can get them for 99 cents so it's not a heavy investment but I don't want you to do that stuff because I want you to take your ideal and put it out there in the world and to see if the world says I'm gonna give you some cash that's what I want you to do fear is thy name this is the biggest thing that keeps people from being successful biggest thing you can have someone who is really smart uh, you can have someone that is really ambitious, powerful, have great resources, and this will stop them dead cold in their tracks. <clears throat> it will really, really create a paralyzing effect. You know, sometimes it's called paralysis by analysis or, you know, just scared little bitch syndrome or essentially you are afraid of the unknown. You are afraid of many of the things that could happen and many of the things that will never ever happen. When you go out and do something new, the chances of you making a mistake are great. The chances of you doing something that creates um, comedy, that creates embarrassment, that creates bad outcome, it's very high. But will you die? No. Will the world stop spinning? No. Will you be horribly maligned to the world? No. I'll give you something that I heard for years. That if, as a writer, if you write a bad book, no one's going to buy the second or third book. So for writers, there's this big fear that that first book or second, it's got to be good. Or, you know, once it, it's not true. And I had someone who bought my first book, the very, very first one, was not happy, left me a five paragraph uh, response, got his money back. And life went on and I kept selling it. Then when the 2011 edition came out, bought it on Amazon, left a positive review. And I said, you know, I bought the first one, which was had problems, but this is a shining example of doing the right thing. Um, oh, actually, he didn't leave it on Amazon. He left it on the blog. But I was just blown away because the thing is, you know, I didn't chase this guy. And this is just the thing. And you, you, you will make mistakes, okay? You'll make mistakes. It's going to happen. Don't, like, lose sleep over that. But if you keep trying and you get better and better and better, people will come back. Everyone? Of course not. But some people will come back. So don't get caught up in that. If I make a mistake, the world's going to end stuff. It's not true. Now, you're going to need some information from your list because... If you've been putting together your list, you've been putting together your businesses part of course, you should have an idea of who your customer is. Like my customer is typically a male between the ages of 25 and 45, high school graduate, uh, sometimes a degree, but most often it's, it's kind of switched because it used to be high school graduates. And now it's actually more people with degrees and, you know, 25, 45 male and is married with 1.2 kids. That, that's kind of like what my demographic says, who's my customer is. And my customer is very much like me, except for, you know, I'm not married. But essentially, you have to figure out who's your customer. Because once you figure out who your customer is, the planning, the action, the application, the ascension, all that stuff becomes much easier. Because, say, 
you know, I just told you who my customer was, but I crafted products that were for, you know, women who were, you know, between 10, well, girls between 10 and 16, I would fail miserably. And that's what happens a lot of times. You will have a person that's crafted a product for a demographic. They don't know who the demographic is. Because that's why, you know, when I do tests and I put up videos and I talk about course and when I get the boo, I already know it's not going to work. So you don't have to spend all this money to find out that it doesn't work. Only when it's working should you spend money. That's why I say don't go ahead and do an LLC. Don't go ahead and uh, print up, don't even print up business cards. You don't even need all that stuff. With, with the way that the web works, you can start a six-figure business and never incorporate Never print up a business card and be very well known. That is the power of the web. So you, you got to know who your customer is. You got to really figure out who are you selling to. Once you figure out who you're selling to, then certain clues and patterns will emerge that um, they are they like this type of thing or they like that type of thing. So it's very, very important for you to know who you're selling to. Now, this is going to be. This is your first exercise for today. It's called hand holding. Whatever you do, whatever product service you have, like uh, I'll use Karen because you know I really like her energy and enthusiasm, and she sells soap. I want Karen to take her soap, find one customer, and give them the top shelf treatment, where you like actually go physically to them and it's like, okay, this is my soap. This is how it works, and I want you to also, if you can do it, get their permission, videotape you doing the QVS thing because you ever notice that when uh, they're selling this stuff they have someone come even if it's like putting their feet in the spa or doing nails they're like you get to see that process by taking this one person and showing them everything about your business or service you get, you will learn so much about your product and you'll get incredible feedback you'll get incredible feedback now, what I want you to do with this is you do this every day until you get overwhelmed. Now, if you already have a business, you already have a website, you can still step back and do this because when you do this, you're going to get daily validation if your business is viable. If people are paying you money, if people are saying, hey, come back, I like this, you've got a business, my friend. And at that point, when you start to get overwhelmed and you have to start leveraging, then that's when you build a website. And that's that's when you start spending money, because it's not a question of where are you going to get the money to build this stuff. It's like you already know it's coming from your customers. And the thing is, you can incorporate them into the process of building your website, put pictures of them and stuff and so on and so forth. So this is your exercise every day. Find one customer. And give them the top shelf treatment to what you're doing. Now, this will teach you how to sell your business. Because as you start doing this stuff, because like, you know, when I first started doing consultings, I had this one ideal and that didn't work. And then I started doing more because at one time I had a special like, you know, if you first joined the Hustler Mindset Project, the consulting was 30 bucks an hour. And I had a lot of people take advantage of 30 bucks an hour. And I was like, OK, OK, so I need to do this. And I was like, OK. And typically... If you understand how the human brain works, when you're writing down something, you actually miss something. So if someone's talking and you write it down, whatever they said, you missed. It could be like just a second, but you missed it and it can make a huge difference. So when I do consults, I record them. And it's like, OK, I'm recording this. You don't have to take notes. You're going to get this. Listen to it three or four times. That came from actually having a consult with someone who asked some of the same questions. So it's like, OK, this person isn't getting it. So I need to give them an element I need to give them a vehicle where they can get it so that's why you know everything's recorded so by doing that I found out something that I would have missed or just not I would have come upon later at some point I think but by doing the at one point it was like when I made the announcement I was doing like two a day for two weeks so I learned a lot in two weeks and that's what happens when you really jump in your business and you push forward and you really, really, really invest in your customer. Now, let's just talk about some of the things that people do wrong starting the business, you know, with the spending of the money. Um, they don't research. You want to research. If you do your research, that could be 50% of the battle. 
you know, research, due diligence, and just spend only what you need. And no need today is you're buying stuff you don't need. Like I've, I've referenced people who rented office space before they had their first client. Don't do that. Do I mean, it's just don't get a warehouse before you have product. Don't buy a delivery vehicle before you have business. Now, the other side of that is if you get the vehicle, it may force you to go out and get some business. But that's kind of like trial by fire. And just find out what people want, then sell it to them. Because the thing is, with investing money in your business too early is it creates a drain. It also creates a problem. It, keep, it creates a cash flow problem. It creates a big, big cash flow problem. Because you're spending money, you're spending money, you're spending money. This is why anyone that talks to me, I talk them out of opening up a retail store. Because the minute you open up that store, with most places, you have to get a business license. And you have to get your certificate of occupancy. And then you have to get insurance. And you, then some places you rent, then you must sign up for trash service as part of you getting your business license. So you went from having no expenses to anywhere from 2000 a month fixed cost up to five, six, seven or more. And you haven't even made any money. So I've talked to everyone like open up, get a warehouse. It's cheaper. You get more space and you give yourself more options because say you get a warehouse and you get a big one. Right. And say your business idea doesn't work out. Guess what? You have a new business. I will store your stuff for X amount of dollars, enough to pay your rent or something. You, you, you just have options with that warehouse that you don't have with the storefront. You just don't have it. It's just ridiculous. And there's a certain beauty and art to own in a store. And, you know, you're the shopkeeper. But I got over that shit. I got over it because I would not advise anyone to open up a store without opening up the warehouse because this is my process open up a warehouse get your online channels going then if you want to open up a store because at that point you're not so vulnerable to whether the foot traffic or comes in because just have once you have a store it doesn't mean people are going to show up it just doesn't now this is what you should do i call this uh alchemy mental alchemy i want you to think and run like okay some of the exercises in this is, bam, think fast. I want you to create a product or create a service, create a list, and just go out and do it. Just do it. Like the old Nike slogan, just do it. Because you'll find out very, very quickly if your ideal is good. When you go to 10 people and 10 people are like, mm, no. Nah. Mm, no, you go to 20 and you get the same thing. You go to 30 and you get the same thing. That tells you that there's something really wrong with your idea. Uh, before Craigslist got rid of it, there was a way that you could track how many hits that your ad on Craigslist got by putting some code in the picture. But since you cannot host pictures like that anymore, you can't use the service. But I used to use that service to let me know if my pricing was off or something's wrong. Because if I put up an ad and I get a thousand hits in three hours, but I don't get an email, there's something wrong. And typically it was a pricing issue. So sometimes I'd just be like, ah. Because I remember I had this nice leather sofa set. And, you know, I had a thousand bucks on it. People looking at it, no bites. Moved it down to 900. Same thing. Finally went to 550. It was gone in two hours. I mean, it was just it was just hard to do it because it was so pristine. And part of the reason I was reluctant to let it go so cheap is I spent a lot of money on that unit. That's another thing that happens when you pay too much for your inventory that in your mind it's like yeah i paid this so i'm trying to get this out of it and you're trying to break even and sometimes you just have to chump down hard on the bit and take the loss and move on because that's what i did i mean the whole process of lowering it, it took me two days and then the rest of the stuff and i actually just broke even on that unit because i spent too much money i would have been better off not even buying it because it was so nice and the furniture was so clean but there was a lesson well learned your ideal is currency. If you have a lot of ideals, that's that's money. Because there's no such thing as too many ideals. Now, there may be such a thing as you have more ideals than you can actually implement. That can happen very quickly. But the more ideals, the better. Uh, today, you can make money with no money. When I started Conundrum Publishing, my total investment the first 14 months was 283 bucks, And I made $62,000. So... Who can't come up with 
$280 for a business. I mean, if you can't come up with that in a month, you're really fucked. I'm serious. You really are. So you can start and with the YouTube and I'll I'll give you some more things like we'll talk about pre-sales a little bit more, but we're not going to get too deep into it because that's more of an advanced uh, technique. But with a pre-sale, you can not even have a product. You can't even have the ideal that you could just kind of have the framework of the ideal and you can sell, get orders, take that money and use it to build a product. I've done it four times and it's it's awesome, but it's also a little scary because once you start taking people's money, you're committed. You got to do it. You got to do it. So that's when it gets really, really interesting. Now, the process is to start to evaluate to analyze, to do, and to do it as fast as you freaking can. Because your ideal may be great in your head, but when it comes out and meets the air of reality, it may not be so great. Um, Typically, you have to really sit down and ask yourself some questions. Basically, why am I doing this? And why would someone else wants this? The reason I'm doing this course is I have what I call uneducated customers for the future. Based on what I think, you know, I'm betting the farm on it. I think with the current economic climate that each year is going to be harder and harder for people to find decent paying jobs. And people will be forced into entrepreneurship, not because they want to be an entrepreneur, but they need to feed little Johnny and little Jill. They're going to have to do it. So you good folks who are here today and who've been here and who will be here tomorrow are helping me build a product that I'll be able to sell for years. Because I believe that market, and now that's just a future market, because I think the future market is going to be much bigger than the present market. And I'm talking about within five years. And then I firmly believe that to be free in the East United States of America You must absolutely have your own business. You must absolutely have your own way of learning how to generate income, even if it's 500 bucks, because you can scale that up later. But figure out some way that you can do something, provide a service or something to some of your friends, strangers, whoever, that will earn you money. That is an incredible skill set to have because that's something you could pass on to your kids. Because, you know, many people talk about gold and silver and hedging and all this other stuff. We get to the point where silver and gold is sky high. The international economy is fucked. We're going to be in a bartering system and guns and bullets and water will be way more important than gold and silver. So what? You got, you know, $50 million worth of gold in your basement, but you have no food to eat. What good is it really going to be? So with that, before, you know, now that I've scared you and everything, I don't think we're ever going to get to that state. I don't think gold's ever going to be like 50,000. I don't think it's ever going to happen because that would mean so many things have melted now. So many things have just gone completely sideways. But you should uh, really, really look at your business long term because now this is the beauty of doing this. You can create two businesses. Uh, say you have an ideal for some long term. What you can do is what I call 30 minutes a day uh, business development. 30 minutes a day. Find out whatever type of research you need to do, talk to whatever customers, and only devote 30 minutes a day to that business while maybe your short-term business, which may be one to five years, you just go ball out. You're still building that business. I'm going to tell you something that's really funny, and many of you are guilty of this and you don't even know it. If you meet someone, right, if you're a man or a girl, this is mostly applies to girls, guys don't, not so much, and... It's like three weeks in and you want to have sex. It's a little weird for a lot of women. But if you meet this woman and communicate with her, but really don't hang out with her, but you've known each other for six months and there's constant communication. And even though you still are unknown, it's a lot easier to make that happen because there's this presumption that you are more stable and solid and she's known you longer. Same thing applies to businesses. So say you start your business with the 30 minute a day plan, right? And here it is 10 years later. And you get to the point where you incorporate it and then you just start growing it. Because Waffle House actually didn't start spreading like wildfire. They actually had a few locations for 10 years. And once they got down their methods, that's when they started growing. 
So here it is at the 10 year mark. It's like you go on paper, you've got a corporation that's 10 years old. You look very, very solid. So what if it was just the last year that you made all the money? That's preparing for the future. So you can have a short term hustle, a short term business and long term business. You can do both. Uh, we live in a society where it's like all of nothing. You know, it's like if I can't give it my whole heart, I ain't interested. You let that go. You're going to have to segment your life just like you have a job and you have a wife and you have kids. You have to kind of segment and compartmentalize how you handle those relationships. You can do the same thing with a business. You, you know, because like I said, I've got a book I'm working on and I don't write a lot, maybe 50 words, 100 words a day because it's such it's such a challenge to me. But if I'm consistent, it's going to get done. Now, this is the cool thing. Um, I got an email last night. One of the members, his name is Bill. He's made 1300 bucks and he's made it on seven day following the stuff that's been in his course. He already has a business, so he didn't start from scratch, but he is freaking excited. Just some of the things that I just said in the course, he implemented them and he made 1300 bucks last week. So he is $1,200 away from his $2,500 in the first 30 days. Because the thing is, I'm talking about a lot of procedures, deals. I'm talking about a lot of uh, mental stuff right now. Because once you start doing this, you can make the $2,500 in a week, depending upon your price points and product. So understand, this is very doable. If you do the work, you will be successful. Let me say that again for the people in the back, for the folks on the side. If you do the work, you will be successful. And the reason I put that MacBook up there, that's what's, that, it's, it's 1300 bucks for, for the 13-inch MacBook Pro. It's $1,300. He made that in a week, and this is above and beyond what he normally does. He's freaking excited. So once again, if you do the work, you're going to get the results. If you don't do the work, you're not going to get the results. Okay, so... We are there, and I am. I'm. 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 I'm getting better because I came in under time. So at this point, I will answer questions. What's up, Aaron? Hey, what's going on, uh, Gary? Gary Vernachuk. Yes, I love Gary, but I don't agree with everything he says. Uh, April Hunter. Pat Flynn. I love Pat Flynn. And this is the thing with Pat Flynn. I'm going to tell you what's under the hood with Pat Flynn. Great. Great uh, comment, April, because Pat Flynn did what I did. He was an architect, I believe, an architect or an engineer. No, he was an architect, and he took the lead exam, and he wrote a blog about it, and he created a paid product for the lead exam. That's how he made $200,000 in one year. And then when he did that, he created this other social media stuff. Pat Flynn makes his money from peddling influence. Most of his income comes from Bluehost. And I'm not mad at the guy. He's very brilliant. He's a very smart guy. He's a hard worker. He deserves everything he got. But the thing is, when you're trying to be everywhere on every platform and just hammering it, it does kind of impact your quality of life if you're really being everywhere. Uh, Dwayne, yep, I can analyze an entire day away and wonder why it's dark when I'm ready to start. <laughs> What's up, Jonathan? Hey, what's up, John? Hey, David. Uh, David, um, this is the deal with, because, you know, since this is Sunday, like I said, I've made a plan. I'm not trying to keep people really here all day Sunday because I know Sunday is a day that a lot of people get ready for Monday and do other stuff. Uh, you can watch the earlier days if you join. And let's see. Let me help you out. See, I, I've got this up here. I'm going to show this to you while other people have their questions. And the day is not uh, like a killer day because, I'm, you know, this is a lot of stuff that's coming up. There's going to be days that are not going to be as intense because every day can't be intense. That would drive you crazy. All right. This is what's going on. If you want to join Lifetime, that's 200 bucks. And every 30 days is twenty nine ninety five. That's to join the 30 days to 2,500 bucks Facebook group. It's going to be ongoing because this is the grand plan. This is what's going to happen. Once I do the 30 days. It's going to be a program and it's going to be a program that you're helping me build. That's why I'm doing it for free. Understand, I will go ahead and just be totally unvarnished. Uh, since I've started doing this program, 
I've gotten 750 new emails. I've gotten a. There's this is this is like how you can benefit from the word free. Uh, if you signed up for this course, I got your email address. Uh, there were some people who put in dummy emails, which was to be expected. Most people were honest and they put their real email. So I got the email. And what's more important is there are people who are making money from the information. That's the most important thing. There are people who are benefiting. So if you want to watch the recorded stuff, you have to join the group. Uh, next question. Will they ever be on YouTube? No. These videos will never, ever be on YouTube. Well, yeah, they won't be like publicly on YouTube. Never, ever. And that's how you get to watch the older stuff. Uh, what's, uh, this is David. Come in late to, is it, uh, let's see, well, uh, David, is it better to start a business for a product or a service or if you have two different business ideas? Great question. Depends on you. What do you want to sell? I mean, what do you want to do? It's like, it's not really better if you start with a product or service, it's what you want to sell. What have you researched for the marketplace? What have you determined that you have to offer? I mean, it's really incumbent on what you are going to, you know, like I said, offer the world. So it's really on you. Uh, Manny told my girl V days over my girlfriend's time is done for a bit the next 30 days we're a partnership trying to stack our money <laughs> that's funny all right Dwayne glad you're pushing expanding our customer list there are some folks I never really consider customers but who are vendors or associates of my vendors for my maintenance business these people already know me and I never thought of them as customers this I've been their customer thus far. Yeah, because a lot of times you have assets that you don't really think are assets because you downgrade them. Great, great comment. Uh, let's see, John. Here you are. <laughs> Go to the last video on YouTube and there are both links. Uh, David, would you suggest everyone start a three blogs as an action item is it something they can start making money quickly? Well, uh, that's a two part question. I would actually recommend that you don't start a blog. I actually recommend that you do not start a blog. I actually recommend that you don't start a website until you validate your ideas and make sure they can make money. If you're, if you want to start blogs, like blogs are notoriously hard to make money from. They're very hard to monetize. That's why you need to have the money Thing figured out before you even start the blog like my blog is pretty much in place because I've got a few things I want to share and I wanted to do it but it's a placeholder so when people click this where is it they go to my blog they sign up they get the free audio book and I get their email address list building is crazy you have to do it uh, Isaiah I don't use Pinterest to bring leads because I'm not selling a female driven type product Pinterest works 90% for stuff that women like. Much better. Food, things like that. Men items, not so much. David, write an app versus technical training. I'm not sure I understand that. John, what, is, what if your idea requires a lot of science? Should I put that on hold and try more short-term gains to opportunities to feed the long-term project? Once again, that's kind of on you. If you feel that your ideal is something you really want to do and you've got this burning passion, then you're just going to have to put in the work. Like, okay, say you want to build a factory that manufactures robots. Okay, that's going to be a little beyond the scope of this currently because let's look at it. You're going to have to get an LLC. You're going to have to get a factory. You're going to have to get a business license. And you're going to have to have a lot of money to start. What this course is designed to do is to teach people how to create stuff from just, you know, it's like, say, okay, say you want to start a dog walking business and, you know, you've got like six dogs. This course will teach you how to get to 30, 40 dogs and you'll, you'll be, you'll be walking dogs all day long, but you'll have fat pockets. Uh, Isaiah, would you suggest any business improving apps like Square to improve sales? The app space is... A funny place um, you don't have to build the app so that's a good part but once again is that something you want to do uh, I should say this if you're gonna do a business 
and you're going to spend a lot of time and effort into it, make sure it's something you like. Can you start a business that you absolutely despise and make a lot of money? Yeah, people do it all the time, but they can't stay in their business. It's like being married to someone you don't like. How much fun is that? Uh, Tracy, I'm a big fan of Gary V. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, well, I am a big fan of Gary V. Also, you may be off on your demographics. I am my early 50s, a woman, and I've been have a feeling I ha will be a customer in 30 days. Let's see. I'm gonna show you something. Uh, let's see. Where is it? 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 There are my demographics. <laughs> I'm not off. It used to be like 90% when I first started. It was 90% male, 10% female. Now, you know, here we are. Uh, well, I was a little off because there's more, but this this is this is it. This is where most of the people fall. This is what YouTube gives you. You know, years ago, you would have had to pay a lot of money to get this stuff. So this is where um, my people typically are. But I'm glad you're going to become a customer. I didn't mean a fan of Gary Vee. Okay. <laughs> sure thing, John. Uh, this is from Chris. I read, a few, I read in a few books that delegating menial tasks like shoveling snow or running errands allows the business owners to focus on making money. Have you tried it? Would you recommend it? Also, how can I get an assistant for a little or nothing? Uh, I have done it. And actually, it makes sense. Actually, I gave that as an advice to someone that has a business that they would be better off to hire someone to run their business while they work on building the business. Because when you are your business and you are doing everything in your life, your time runs out very quickly. It runs out very, very quickly. So understand that depending on where you are financially, that may make sense. It may not. If you don't have two nickels to rub together, you know, it may make more sense for you to, you know, to shovel the snow. But I've tried it. And the thing is, if you want to get a really cheap assistant, go to the Philippines and get a VA. Uh, Jelani, I've been expanding my email list this week. I'm a member of a variety of forums, and that's been a part of it for several years. So people know me. That's a great place to fish for leads, man. Uh, this is Victor. I have a dead-end job that pays good money because I've been there forever. What's a good skill to have if I work a lot of hours? Um, let me answer that question like this. What do you like to do? What kind of skills do you have? Because the thing is, I understand where you're coming from because you're asking for like, hey, what for a recommendation. And what I'm asking you to do is to explore what you know how to do. There's a guy that made a lot of money um, creating remote control airplane videos on YouTube. And it was his passion. So really think about what you like to do, because what I'm trying to set people up and let me just say this again. I not only do you want you to have a business I want you to be happy and you can do both. I know it sounds strange, but you can do both. So pick something you enjoy and monetize it. Uh, Leslie Ann, how many YouTube channels should you have? One for each ideal in business? Uh, let's kind of step back. Once you validate your business, that will dictate how many channels. So if you have five businesses that you validated that you know make money, you can have five channels. If the business is not making money, don't make the channel. Make the money first, do the channel second. Let's see, this is John. What scheme would have the least resistance to get started? Reselling, building a cool app. Uh, that kind of depends on the resources you already have on hand. Like say, I don't know you, say you're a programmer. It'll be easier for you to do an app if you're a programmer. Uh, if you have no programming skills, you don't know any programmers, you can't hire anyone to do the programming, then reselling would be easier to get into. Uh, Dwayne, guy with blog question, content, not random stuff to fill pages. What do you know? Hobbies are great, 
My Jeep, web, my Jeep website has constant traffic and a decent ad revenue, but I would not have any traffic if I didn't love fooling with old Jeeps and taking photos of the work so the people can keep their Jeep running. Same things applies to blogs. Why go to a random blog? Because that person has information I want to enjoy and need. Great comment. Thank you. Uh, David, how do you narrow down dozens of ideas that have merit to one to generate money? Short time, small money versus long time, big money. Once again, validation. You take each idea one at a time or two at a time and you go to the public and see if they will give you money. If they will not give you money, you virtually ascertain that's not a good idea. Yeah, if you don't love it, you won't stay with it not long. Uh, Aaron, is there a perfect business? Yes, there's a perfect business for you, and it's up for you to find it. I know you didn't like that answer, but it is. Uh, I will speak on that. When I started doing YouTube videos, I freaking hated them. I actually did uh, procrastination, didn't want to do the video. I hated them. When you become good at something, you'll start to love it. But in the beginning, I didn't like this stuff. I couldn't stand it. Uh, David, I'm building eight apps, games, and the time to get things is moving faster than what I like because I've been waiting on some tasks with other people, people so I can relate to the slow cycle that the other guy was asking about. In the down, downtime, I'm growing my brain on your videos and podcasts. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you can have two or three businesses. Actually, I recommend it, but, you know, get one validated, get the income started, and then move on with the other business. Uh, David, I got an Indian guy managing an art team of Filipinos. I'm still clueless on the social media and marketing, though, mainly because I've been anti-social and working on it. <laughs> Ooh, this is Chris. How long before the herd arrives? It's kind of startling in the Pacific Northwest with job layoffs and business closes, but I feel like a trickle of what is to come. I'm pegging it at five to seven years. I'm pegging it at five to seven years because... We have amazing technological technological advances that are happening right now, and they're putting people out of work. And it's really, really kind of scary when you see, like, take QuickBooks. QuickBooks put account, a lot of accountants out of work. There used to be a job called a bookkeeper. QuickBooks put those people out of work. There's more of this stuff that's coming. Like, someone right now is developing something that's going to probably displace 100,000 jobs in the next five years. So... Five or seven years is what I peg it. I could be wrong. Uh, Philippine, Leslie Ann, uh, VA is a virtual assistant. Uh, John, there's a difference between the word ideal and ideal. I'm not sure if you're using them incorrectly on purpose. Actually, I am. Because I want people to think. There's a big difference between the two. Uh, Byron, how do you make money on YouTube? Sponsors and ads? Actually, I don't make a lot of money from ads. I mean, it wouldn't it pay it would, it would pay my car note, I believe, most months. But I make ninety five percent of my income from selling my products. I uh, haven't done the sponsorship thing because that gets a little interesting. You can because what I do is really, really kind of different. Because I've been approached by some people, but it's been what I call lowball stuff, and I didn't really want to do it. Uh, David, the guy who asked about the apps, I love to chat with the him. I've been doing programming for years, but only now learning to monetize them just because you got the skills. Doesn't mean you, you know how to bring them to market right. You two should join the Facebook group and start talking. Uh, Chris, I've added real estate to my endeavors in the past in the next four to five years. Do you think of any insider of experience in, in real estate? Uh, actually, I have a little experience in real estate. My thing was I was getting stuff super cheap and flipping it, but everyone's doing that now. Uh, which one? I've got like six songs in the videos. One of them's called Epic Drama. Uh, this is from John Juan. Sorry. What do you think about regular online advertisements such as the offers from YouTube to put your video on the top of search or Facebook, putting your image and link to the page on the sides? Uh, I think it's cool, but you got to be real careful because you can spend a ton of money with advertising. It really depends. Like, I will tell you, I'm experimenting with YouTube advertising right now, and 
my best video that did the best for the least amount of money was the one dollar challenge it's got like uh, 4,000 views and I think I spent like 20 bucks so this I'm still experimenting with that I think it's great and at some point you may have to do it but you got to know how to do it uh, David is there any good chat rooms for hustlers like us so we can go on and bouncing ideas off each other so I know you're probably gonna say start my own you know it you're learning. Yeah, start your own. Start your own and join the Facebook group because there's going to be a lot of activity there. Yeah, that little boy was weird, Leslie Ann, on your video about the uh, the rat, the chinchilla. Yeah, that, it was kind of strange. When he stood up on my desk, I freaked out. I'm not going to lie. Could starting on uh, this is from David. Could starting a charity be a good first business for experience? Uh, this is my thing on charities and nonprofits. If you're that type of person, I say go for it. But if you're not really interested in that stuff, I would leave it alone because there's a lot to it than um, you think. Because my partner had a 501c, I believe, and the shit she went through, it was amazing. Yes, the chinchilla dude was one creepy ass little hustler. Yes, he was for sure. Okay, it's 4.46. Uh, the questions are slowing down. I will be here again tomorrow at 4 p.m. And if you're in Hustle University, we will be doing this again tonight at 8. Uh, That's going to be an overview. So with that, let's see if there's any more questions. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. I appreciate your time, and I will see you on the good side.